what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, we doing what we said we was gonna do. We gonna break down and just talk about UFC 308 coming up this weekend, Saturday, October 26th. Today is the 24th, Thursday, so we got two more days, man. So I gotta make this video so we can talk about it, okay? So, you know, I'm just a big fanboy right now. You know, Young LA got these, um, shoot, they got the Young LA teaming up with the UFC. And they got this drop coming on the 29th, actually. But it's a bunch of, like, UFC gear. And these jerseys are, like, part of it. So I was like, let me put the jersey on for this. Because we we big fanboying over here. But, yeah, man, this card is fucking amazing. It's really stacked. And we're going to go over the main card. And we'll go over some of the, the prelims as well, okay? So, but we'll start, you know, with the most exciting fight. So we'll start from the top to the bottom, all right? So we'll start with the main event. Ilya Topuria, 145 pound featherweight champion of the world versus Max Holloway, you know, former world champion, current BMF champion. You know what I mean? So the funny thing about this fight is I can't see either of these guys losing. I, they both got crazy aura right now. Ilya is 15 and 0 undefeated. Max is just like, he, he's fucking hard to beat he's only really lost to like the best and in the featherweight division i think the only guy he's really lost to was like volk three times you know no i know that sounds bad but it's like two of his losses actually weren't that bad he only lost to him like his third fight was when he really got beat but the first one i i thought that was really close the second one you could say max won it um so it, it's like misleading like max is that dude and he's on a freaking he's just maturing right now like, I don't know, I'm just feeling like the stars are aligned for him. He just keeps getting better and better and better. I'm just seeing his attitude. He seems more mature, just more understanding. He's always had super high fight IQ, but I just think he's learning and getting better. So I think he's really hard to beat right now. Ilya has got this aura too. He's this undefeated fighter, just knocked Volk out. He's speaking with all this confidence. He's got this swagger about him. I think he's one of the best personalities in the UFC right now. One of the most entertaining because he's one of those guys where like he's a foreigner you know he's a foreigner but he learned english and it's like now he's speaking that shit more slick and better than anybody that really speaks english like he just got that he's just got a great confidence i like how he speaks and he seems to will things into existence and he's a knockout artist and he's well-rounded um so it's just very hard for me right now to see either of them get beat because he's this really is this new school fighter coming in but Max is like, you know, he's an OG, but he ain't old like that. He's like 32 years old. He just seems old because we've been seeing him fight since he was like 20 years old. But I just think Max is primed out right now. Like he just knocked out Justin Gaethje. He knocked out Korean Zombie. He went five rounds with Arnold Allen. And none of these guys are really touching him. Like the Max was dancing around controlling all of those fights. And if you really think about it, like Ilya's main weapon is like, you know, his power... And like his main chance of winning, if you ask me, is if he knocks Max out. But Max ain't, man, Max ain't even really ever been knocked down. He did get knocked down in the Gaethje fight, but it wasn't like he really got rocked like that. Like he got his ass right back up and he was fine. So yeah, he got knocked down, but it wasn't that crucial. And for some reason, the UFC or the stats don't even recognize that as a knockdown. Max said it was a knockdown. He was like, yo, that was a knockdown. But if you, the record book show, he still hasn't been knocked down because whoever was watching that fight they didn't count it so i think Ilya's main path to victory his only chance is really knocking max out but i don't really think you're I, I, I can't see max getting knocked out like that and most of the time when Ilya knocks these guys out he always gets them up against the cage like he pressures them up into the cage and then they're against the cage and it's like then he just lets his fucking bombs go and i'm like i don't really see you getting max to the cage like that you know what I mean? Because Max be dancing around you, be peppering you. But if you just try to be like a bowling ball and just run and smash into him, he'll fucking feel like he's spitting back kicks to slow you down. Like, hold up, bro. You ain't about to just come rush at me. I got something for you. And Max don't mind fighting in the fire either. Like, Max will meet you in the middle a little bit too. You know, exchange with you, boom, boom, boom. That's how he fucking beat Aldo. He was in the pocket with Aldo the whole time. Both fights. But he ran him down. He would dodge Aldo's punches, barely make a miss, and then he'd come back and counter Aldo and... Get him out of there. 
He did that with Gaethje. You know, he's not scared to uh, be in the pocket with these big punchers. Even the Dustin Poirier fight. People would be like, yo, Dustin whooped his ass. And he did get the better of Max for sure. You know, he won the fight. And maybe Max was looking bludgeoned after that fight. But I don't know if y'all remember, if you, you know, let me tell you, in round two, I believe it was, Max almost got Dustin out of there. Max swarmed Dustin, had him against the cage, and he was just wailing on him. Boom, 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 boom. And the bell rang. And even Dustin said, like, yo, I was about to be done right there. Like, if the bell didn't ring, I don't know what would have happened. Like, I was, I was on my way out. So, like, I don't, and that was Max's first time at 155, and it was short notice, things like that. So, I excuse that. I excuse that. So, Max is a fucking winner, and I think his aura is just really, like, it's like he knows something. I'm, I'm on to it, but, like, most of the public is picking Ilya, but I feel like Max is just like, I know something y'all don't know. Y'all are, like, counting me out in a way. Yeah, I forgot how good I am, and the threats that Ilya presents, like, we got the perfect counter for that. Like, trust me. That's what his aura is saying to me. Like, y'all must have forgot. Y'all must have forgot who I am. I deal with these big punchers all the time. Justin Gaethje was a big puncher. You know what I'm saying? He just fucking struck, was striking with Yair Rodriguez. Like, Yair Rodriguez isn't, like, the biggest puncher, but this motherfucker throws flashy-ass shit. These fucking wheel kicks, these fast-ass things that will knock you out. And Max is always in the pocket with these guys. He's not scared. So I'm having a hard time seeing Max lose. And Ilya, just because, you know, he's this undefeated fighter, he's got this cool aura about him. It's hard to see him lose too. But, you know, if I'm giving a pick, if I'm giving a pick, I've watched all their interviews. I've been, I just watched the press conference. I'm going with Max. I just think Max got these weapons, man. I don't think you can just fucking be a bowling ball and just run into him and run him over. I just think, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's how it goes. Max is a dog, you know? So, so enough of that one. I'm a, I'm a pick Max right now. That's where I'm at. Today, it's Max. Yeah, I'm gonna just end it at that. I'm picking Max. Let's go on to the co-main event, okay? This is a five round fight with Robert Whitaker and Hamza Chemaev. All right, all right. This fight is actually very similar to the main event in which Robert Whitaker has been around forever. It's like he's Max, and you got Hamza, this new undefeated guy. He'd be Ilya in this case. They, they both got aura again. Once again, I think Robert Whitaker is like primed out right now. He's believing in himself. He's... Only 32 years old or something like that. So you would think he's old, but it, no, he's not old. He's in his fucking prime. In his last fight, he knocked out Ikram. And maybe the fight before that, okay, he beat Paulo Costa. And I think the fight before that, maybe he had lost against Drickus or something. But I felt like he just wasn't um, like fully confident in that Drickus fight or fully motivated. I think he thought he was just going to run through Drickus. And I think Drickus gave him a harder fight than he thought. And things just went downhill for him because it was harder than he thought it was going to be. But I think, you know, he just quickly corrected that. And then he's shown in these next fights that, like, no, he is that guy. And in his last fight with Ikram, what I saw was a Robert Whitaker that was very... His eyes were really good and his reflexes were really good. What I mean by that is, like, he set Ikram up. And like the first round, like he, he tra he's like, let me throw this jab and see what you do. And he saw what Ikram did. He's like, okay, I'm gonna try that again. You're gonna do that again? Ikram did it again. And he's like, all right, here we go. And he did it again. Like he set him up one more time and then he acted on it. It happened so fast. It was like, I'm gonna do this feint. I'm gonna gauge your response. Okay, you did that response. Let me try it one more time. Why you did it again? I'm gonna do it one more time. And then bam, he acted on it. So it was like he, he, read, he read the room real quick. He was like, I see what you're doing. I got my analysis real fast. I tested it. I was right. And let me do it. Now I'm ready. If you do it again, you're fucked. And he did it again. And he, he I think he landed like an overhand right or something, cracked him, and then he went up on to finish him. And he finished him really well. He took his time. He was smart with his shots. He ended like with an uppercut or something. He picked his shots. He was very selective. But he had extremely good reflexes. And his eyes saw and made good reads, and he immediately acted on those reads. So he made quick reads. This all happened in like fucking 20 seconds. He's like, okay, I see what you're doing. Okay, I read that. I'll test it one more time to see if my read is accurate. It is accurate. 
Next time if you do that shit one more time, it's over for you. And it was over for him. He made the right reflex and got the finish. So I was super impressed with that because I just feel like that's tough to do. You made a quick read and you had the reflexes to go act on it and you you finished in that sequence. That's A1 right there. That's top-notch shit. So I think, I think Robert Whitaker is really primed right now and the way that he's talking is different than I've ever heard him talk before. He just seems like he has a much stronger why. It seems like he's really just tuned into why he's fighting and before he, I don't know, like after he lost to Izzy, you could see he was just, it was a bit more lollygaggy, like uh, he didn't really know. But I feel like he really knows right now. So I feel like he's highly motivated and his skills and his body are right there to back it up. So I think he is also primed out right now. Now, of course, you got fucking Hamza, the beast. He's a remarkable talent. He's just a fucking stud. He's like the best wrestler in the UFC. That's how he'll claim it. Bo Nickel might have something to say about that. But that's not the that don't matter, man. Hamza is feeling like the wolf. He's feeling like the boars. He's feeling hungry. He wants to go eat. Um, and he definitely has that aura about him. Unbeaten, undefeated. How are you gonna beat Hamza? Hamza has questions. You know, this is gonna be his first five round fight. Rob has gone many five round fights. So we know his you know his cardio is not a question. Like Robert. He says he's going to be able to sprint for 25 minutes. I believe him. I think he will be able to sprint for 25 minutes. He's a dog like that. Hamzat, we've seen Hamzat get tired at the end of these three-round fights. But maybe he's getting tired because they're three-round fights. And he's dumping the gas tank for three. Maybe if it's like, yo, it's a five-round fight, he'll know how to reserve the gas tank and stretch it for five. So we don't really know. You know, I'm not mad at a fighter when they're gassed after three. It's like, maybe you should be gassed after three. Like, that means you gave it all you got. Why would... Why should you have a lot, whole bunch of energy after the third round, you know? That means you didn't give it all you got. So, you know, I think Kamzat, I just think it remains unknown. Like, we don't know. Maybe he does have the cardio for five rounds. Um, Hamzat has some questions, too, to me. Well, well let's, I'll break it down like this. Robert has really good takedown defense. So if Hamzat cannot get the takedown... I don't trust Hamzat's stand-up versus Rob's. I think Rob will pick him apart and pick him apart fast. And the thing about Hamzat, if Hamzat be get, sometimes Hamzat will get cracked. Like, he got cracked in that Gilbert Burns fight. He got emotional and he ditched the game plan. And he even said that's what he did. He was like, even my coaches were like, yo, you, you, you ditched the game plan, bro. You just wanted to go and slug it out after you got hit. Got emotional. You cannot do that with Rob. If Rob cracks you and then you get emotional... And you just forget the game plan. You just want to go slug it out with him. He will finish you quick. Like he, he, that's the beginning of the end right there. He will make you pay two times worse in the next hit because Rob is so calculated. He'll be like, oh, he's emotional. Oh, he made. I told you he makes these quick reads. He will set you up real fast, and like the next hit will probably get you out of there. So you have to keep your composure with Rob. I'm not saying Hamza can't do that. He admitted that that was a problem in the past. So I, I imagine he's worked on that. But sometimes your emotions can just get the best of you in there, I'm sure. Like, even that's something you're like, hey, I'm going to work on my emotions in there. You know, if somebody's getting the better of you and you think you're the shit, you're like, yo, I'm about to run Rob over and then Rob is cracking you, you probably will get emotional again. But maybe not. Maybe he has that reset button. He can just reset and we'll see. But for that reason, for these reasons, my main reason is I don't, I think Rob can defend these some of these takedowns. I think he can keep it on the feet. And I think if Hamzat's on the feet with Rob, I think he gets outstruck. I think he, I think, I think Rob will knock Hamzat out, just like he knocked Ikram out. I think he makes quick reads, good reliable reflexes, and he's he knows how to finish right now, man. And he's proving that he knows how to get these fights over with. You know, he's he's getting it done. So shh, I'm feeling like Robert Whitaker. I'm feeling like Robert Whitaker. You know, so I'm gonna pick Rob. I'm gonna go Rob, man. No more on that one. I'm gonna go Rob. Two major underdogs. I think Max is like a plus 200. I think Rob is like a plus 300. So I know that that shit sounds unlikely. Like you're picking two major underdogs to win, but I don't really see it that way. I think there's just a lot of hype on these two undefeated fighters, but they're fighting like the perfect OGs because they're not really, they're OGs at a game, but they're both still like 31, 32, whatever the hell. They're really young still. And I feel like they're still just peaked out as well. And I think I think they're well rounded, man. I think they I think they can get it both get it done. If it was a three round fight, maybe Hamzat 
because I think he could wrestle him for two out of three rounds, like get him down, hold him down. But because it's five, I think Rob will, will find, find a way, okay? Those are the two most exciting ones. And to be honest to me, they're like coin flips. I, I don't really, I do not know for sure. Obviously, I don't know for sure. Can't see the future. But I can't even see, I can't see Ilya or Max losing. I can see Robert losing. I can see, yeah, I can actually see both of them lose. I can see Robert losing and I can see Hamzat losing. But I think Robert will get it and I think Max will get it. So those are my two picks for the main event and the co-main event. Okay, so moving on to third fight out. We can go over Magomed and Rakic. Uh, Magomed is like 19 and 1, so he is he is that dude, but I don't know why, man. I might, uh, I just, I don't really be getting down with Magomed, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm too infatuated with, like, the personalities and, you know, the excitement in the UFC, and I don't find him very exciting, but obviously he's really good, and the funny thing is he's got that last name, you know, Magomed, or he's Magomed, Uncle Live, so you think he's like a Dagestani wrestler, Russian wrestler, but... He's more of a striker, actually. He's knocking dudes out. So, but he's going against Rakic. You know, Rakic is light on the feet. He's well-rounded in these things. I don't know who wins that one. I think that's a 50-50 fight as well. But Rakic is a huge underdog. Um, Magomed is probably going to win. Magomed's probably going to win. And I feel real stupid because I want to pick Rakic. Probably because I just want to go against... <laughs> I want to go against Magomed because I think he's kind of, I just think he's a little boring. But he deserves all the respect. He's a fucking fantastic fighter. He's 19 and 1. But I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know why I think he's boring either because he's been knocking some dudes out. But I just, uh, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just a hater. I could just be a hater in this case. It's like I want Rockage to win. But it's like if I pick Rockage, it's like, dang, I just picked three fucking underdogs. I, I should go bet on this, this card, right? fucking get get super paid um so i want rockage to win and i kind of like my brain is telling me rockage can definitely get it done but magomed is probably gonna win that one like you know what i mean i think i think i think magomed's gonna win just off of like those statistics but like if you just asked me i didn't see odds i'd probably say rockage dude but whatever i at 50 50 again who the hell knows Magomed's probably gonna win. But if I didn't see the odds, I, I, I think I would say Rockage to be. I think Rockage can win. I, he's super athletic. Like, why can't he move around and get it, land his first? I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why Magomed is such a heavy favorite. I think Rockage can get that shit done. But Magomed's probably gonna win. It's 19 winning for a reason, right? I don't know. Leroy Murphy versus Dan Ige. I got Leroy Murphy. He's just a slick striker, man. I think he gets better each fight. Not much to say about them two because I don't, I don't have too much memory, like in my head of those guys fighting. But what I do recall is like I know Leron Murphy's a nice striker. I think he's like fourteen and zero, maybe one, um, no contest or something like that. But I just remember that he he looks better every fight to me. And Dan Ige, I know he's like. You know, it's Dan 50K Ige, so he's like a knockout artist a little bit too. You know, he's got the heavy hands. But I just think, I think Leroy Murphy is a bit more like tactical, smooth, has more weapons, more athletic, you know, sliding out the pocket, dance around you. Dan Ige kind of just needs to be in your face. And I just think Leroy Murphy is going to be a little too slick for him. So I'm going to go with Leroy Murphy on that one. Okay. Next up, we got... Shara Putdin Magomedov versus Armin Petrosian. I don't really know too much about Armin Petrosian. Shara is new though, you know, he's been around, but he's been fucking people up on the feet. I can't really give an analysis too much because I can't uh, really. I just haven't seen enough of Armin and uh, Shara. I probably haven't even seen all of his fights like that, but I know he's nice on the feet and I think he's just, I think he'll get him, you know. I think Shara's going to win that one. Seems like he's on the rise. So just simply for that reason, I got Shar on that one. Now we're moving into the prelims. Just a couple fights that we'll go over in the prelims. Jeff Neal versus RDA. RDA is like a beautiful, well-rounded fighter, man. He's just going to run at you, mix everything. Punches, wrestle, get you down. You stand up, I'm going to grind you back down. More punches, got you against the cage. Uh, duck, wrestle. He's really good at that shit. In fact, he's like 
I don't want to call him a gatekeeper, but let's say let's say Rafa RDA is like 80, like a all around 80 fighter. If you're an 81, you'll whoop his ass. But if you're fucking 79 or below, he will fuck you up. So like he's like a good test of the division. Like if you if you can't beat him, you know where you stand. Like you're below that 80 mark. But if you're, I swear, if you're just a notch above it, if you're 80 fucking point five or an 81, you'll you'll run through him. And he's fighting Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal's nice, man. His last fight, I believe, was Shavkat. He he showed he was really good in that fight. Jeff Neal is nice. Um, I'm picking Jeff Neal because I think his striking is gonna be better than RDA's. The only question though is, can you defend RDA's takedowns? And are you past that level 80 mark right now? Did you decline a little bit because you've been inactive? If you've declined to 79, bro, that RDA will fuck you up. He will punish you. I'm just believing that Jeff Neal can defend the takedowns, keep it on the feet, and land. He's a crisp striker. Jeff Neal's nice with the striking. And he's got pop in his punches. Not like a crazy knockout artist, but like you let him land three of those, then he will put you out for sure. So I'm going to go Jeff Neal on that one. Okay? Going down to the next one that I see, uh, Abus Magomedov versus Bruno Ferreira. Bruno's the Hulk, you know, knockout artist. I think he's got some jujitsu too, but usually I see him landing like big punches against Abus. Abus, I remember him fighting Sean Strickland. He got his ass whooped by Sean Strickland, but I was still impressed because he has so much weapons in his arsenal. He has a lot of kicks, these punches. He just has a bunch of shit that looks really fucking flashy. And Sean made him miss everything. Like a boost would throw one, two, three. It hit all air because Sean would just, he'd throw a spinning kick, Sean would like just block it. Easy, ah, just parry. But Sean has like the best striking defense in the fucking UFC. So he knew how to deal with all that. He let him throw everything at him and then Abus got tired and then Sean just walked him down and beat, him, beat his ass because Abus was super tired. I don't think Bruno Ferreira has that capability of blocking and dodging all the strikes that Abus has. So I think Boos will throw those same type of shots he was throwing at Sean Strickland, but they will land this time. And those are punishing shots. I think that Abus will get it done. I'm going with Abus on that one. Um, the last two, we'll just do for fun, just because I know who they are. We got Kennedy Inze Chuku versus Chris Barnett. Let's gotta go Kennedy. I think Chris Barnett is just too big, too slow. Fucking Inze Chuku was like 6'5". He's this big fucking Nigerian guy. I just think he can... He's just more of an athlete, and his punches are still going to be crucial if they land. He's a heavyweight, 6'5 guy. I think he can just long-range snipe him, even be in the pocket, and just be able to, you know, outmaneuver Chris Barnett, which is a big guy who throws funky shit. He's super athletic for his size, too, but no, Kennedy is the better athlete for sure, I would, you know, I would imagine. And then the last one, I can't even say his name, but I saw him fight uh, Kevin Lee. Vinat Fakredina. Versus Carlos Leo. Renat's going to win that one. He's just too much of a savage. He looks like a fucking Genghis Khan kind of guy. Like, I don't, I forget where he's from, but you're not fucking with this guy. He's going to win. Um, so those are my picks, man. I got Max, Rob. I think Rocket should get it done. But I, I, like when I wake up, when I wake up in the fight or like if I, I, I just believe, I believe Magomed will win. I do. So close. It's 50 50. It's 50 50 to me. I know Rocket just use underdog, but that shit's 50 50. Like, and the only reason I'm not picking him is because how am I going to pick three underdogs? Like, that just sounds like I'm going to lose, but I want to pick Rocket. Fuck. All right, fuck it. Fuck it. This is what I truly believe. Fuck the numbers. I'm picking what I really believe, all right? Max, then Robert Whitaker, then Rocket, Leroy Murphy, Shara. That's my five for the main event. Those are my circles. And then I got Jeff Neal, Abus, Kennedy, and Renat. I don't know any of the other guys in the prelims, really. Or I do, but we don't got to talk about it. So, yeah, man. Just wanted to share that. I love UFC. I love talking about it with my friends. We fucking are always in a group chat talking or we watch the fights together. My dad really loves it. My family loves it. It's just a really fun. I love it. I watch all the media. I love the storylines. I love how the UFC promotes, and I, I just love it, okay? So I'll just do this, do this shit more for fun, and I'll get better at it. Maybe have a better setup in the future. Um, it's been a long fucking day. I still haven't slept. I just wanted to do it, get it, get something out. Talk about it, you know? Gotta start somewhere, so. 
UFC 308 this weekend, man. Let me, let, me, let me get your picks. Let me get your picks. Where are my UFC fans at, all right? Let me know. Am I stupid? Am I dumb for picking three fucking major underdogs? Let me know, all right? But that's just where, that's where I feel, man. I don't know. In the Rockets, should Magomed fight? Maybe my brain tells me Magomed. No, I don't know. Man, I swear to my heart and my brain be telling me Rockets. I don't know about that one, bro. Don't sleep on Rockage. Don't sleep on Rockage. Okay? I'm going to leave it at that, man. Much love. Let me know what you think. Also, these are dropping on the 29th. They're just fucking fly, bro. You got to... They got they got other shit, too. Just go on. You can check out YoungLA.com, actually, right now and see the type of stuff they got. It's just real cool, man. Just the fact that they're merging, teaming up with the UFC for a collab is fire. All right? Yeah. Appreciate you watching, man. Much love. Peace.